So let's talk about policy-based routing. Policy-based routing, it's a process of overriding the router's default behavior of forwarding the packets. The default behavior is uh, the destination-based routing. So first, let's understand what is a destination-based routing. So the moment a router receives any packet, the first thing that the router does is it checks for the error. So this is done by the layer two. So layer two, if you know the layer two header, so we have something called as FCS, frame check sequence. So the layer two will run the FCS to check for any error. If it finds any error, the packets are dropped by the router. The error fee packets does a destination lookup in the routing information base, correct? <laughs> So the routing information base is nothing but the routing table, which is saved in the control plane of the router. Okay. So if the routing information base has the particular destination feed it into the routing information base, feed it into the routing table, then the router will forward the packet towards that particular destination. If the router is not available in the RIP, it will simply drop the packet. That is called as the destination based routing. So this is the default behavior of a router. It will check the destination. If the destination is available in my routing table, I will simply forward the packet. If the destination is not available, I will discard it. So now, in order to override this behavior, we can create a policy. We can define a policy. So that is called as policy-based routing. So let's see how the policy is created. So the policy-based routing intercept the ingress packet before regular routing. So whenever a router receives any packet through the ingress, through the inbound interface, so basically it goes to the control plane and check the rib. Okay. So here, what we are doing by creating the policy, we are changing this default behavior and we are asking the router, instead of going to the rep, check the policy. So it is implemented for ingress unicast traffic only. So the policy that we will be created, that will only apply for the incoming traffic on the router's interface. It cannot be used for aggress, multicast, or a broadcast traffic. The decision is based on policies rather than the destination based. So the decision regarding forwarding the packet will be completely defined by the policy. And to alter this decision, we need to create a route map. So we will be defining the policy with the help of a route map. Okay. So let's understand how route map work. Now route map is used for two purposes. Okay. So first it has two attributes you can say. So the first attribute is the match attribute and then you have to set. Then there is a set attribute. So the match attribute decides which traffic to be, is to be delivered. Okay, so from the incoming inf interface, we need to decide which traffic has to be delivered. And the set parameter will decide where the pat packet has to be delivered. All right. So let's understand this by looking at the lab setup. So let's say this is our lab. So here, as you can see, I have four routers. I have router one, router two router 3 and router 4 and I have two users attached to router 1 and router 4. So here between R1 and R2 I'm using the network 1.2.12.0 so this will be my 12.1 12.2 between R2 and R3 I'm using this network so this is 23 dot 2 and 23 dot 3 right here now between r3 and r4 i'm using 34 network so 34 dot 4 and 34 dot 3 right here 
between R1 and R2, I have 14, 14.1 14 and 14.4. 14 okay. Now, this is the, my LAN network. So, in the LAN network, I'm using a private IP, 192.168.1.0. So, the PC is 1.100. And this interface, let's say this is 1.1. Likewise, here, I'm using 4 network. So, the PC is 4.100. And this gateway is 4.1. So let's say this is my lab setup. And for the reachability purpose, we will configure with an IGP protocol, OSPF, under area 0. So R1, R2, R3, and R4 will be part of OSPF area 0. All right. So now, OSPF, we already know, it makes the decision on the basis of cost. So let's say this is my source, this PC, 1.100 is my source, and this is my destination, 4.100, okay? So when I ping from PC1, so when I will ping from PC1 to 4.100, it will generate a packet. with the source IP and a destination IP. There will be loads of information, but we need to look at this to information, layer three encapsulation. So the source IP will be 1.100. Destination will be 4.100, right? So this packet will be forwarded to router one. Now the default behavior of my router, as we said, it's a destination based routing. So what does that mean is this router will first look at the destination. It will check the destination 4.100. So it will check its RIB, routing information base. It will check its routing table. So in the routing table, router 1 must have learned about 4.100 network through OSPF. So in the routing table of R1, We'll see something like OSPF and it will learn about 192.168.4.0 network from 14.4 from this interface. So 14.4 will be the next stop the router one will prefer in order to reach this network. And the interface will be this interface. So let's say the interface is F1.0. So this will exist in the routing table of R1. So when the router will receive this packet, it will check the destination, 4.100. It will check for the network 4. So on the basis of the routing information, it will forward the packet towards its next stop, that is 14. So in this case, the packet, it will go like this. So from router 1, it will go towards R4 and router 4 will send this packet towards PC2. But I want to alter this decision. I want to alter, I want to change from a normal destination-based routing to policy-based. Right. So what we need to do in this case, I will create a policy. So for that, I would require a root map. I will create a root map. And as we said, there are two attributes for root map. So first is match. Next is set parameter. So in the match, we need to decide which packet has to be delivered. So I want to say, if this is my source and this is my destination. So I want to select this host and the destination I want to select this host. So in order for selecting, I will create an access list. So the route map, we will create an access list for selecting my source 
as PC1 IP and my destination as PC4 PC2 IP. So now I will call this ACL. Let's say this ACL number is 100. I will call this in your. So I'm saying the root map that this is my packet. This packet from this source has to be delivered to this destination, this host. So the match attribute is set. Now the set attribute, I need to select where it needs to, where what should be the next destination, how it should be traveling towards this destination. So here I will say, instead of choosing 14.4 as the next stop, I want to select 12.2. So this should be my next stop. So now it is going, the packet is going in this direction. I want to alter this and I want to change it to this. So the packet will now, from 12.2, I want to choose this as the next stop. So it will go from here, router 2 will forward it towards router 3. Then it will come here towards router 4 and router 4 will forward it towards PC2. So this should be my root instead of this. So this is possible with the help of root map. So we'll create this root map. And after that, we will be calling this root map inside the policy. So let's see. Let's see the next step. So these are the two parameters that we just spoke about, match IP and the set IP. Packets can be matched by following criteria. So on the match IP address, ACL is used to select that particular traffic. Also, we can decide on the length. So here we are selecting the IP address. Here we are selecting the size of the packet. So we can even alter the size. We can even define the policy based on the size of the packet, which is in bytes. Right now, set command. There are four commands, four options we have under set command. So either you can set a next IP, next stop. Okay. So when we select this command, the router will change its default behavior. Instead of checking the routing information base, it will check forwarding information best. So I'm asking the router by doing this, I'm asking the router to check FIB forwarding information based, wherein we have defined the policy. Now the next command set IP default next stop. So when we use the default keyword before next stop, so what am I instructing the router here? First you check rib. If rib fails, then you check fib. So first you follow your default behavior. If there is no route in your routing table, then you prefer the policy that we have defined. Yep. Also, instead of giving the next stop, we can also set with the interface name and number. Same thing. If we set default, so first it will check rib and then it will check fib. So in the next stop, if you are using default, if you're not using default, so first it will check for fib and then it will check for rib. When we use the default keyword, first it will check the rib, the normal behavior, and then it will check the fib, the default behavior, the policy. Right? So this is how you can create the route map. Now, how to configure policy-based routing? So the first step is to create an access list. So first, we need to decide what will be my source and what will be my destination. So first, we will define an ACL. Second thing, we will call this ACL inside a root map. So this is the configuration to create a root map. So I'll say root map. We will call it by any name. And then we, will, we need to provide a sequence number. Then. I will call the ACL inside my HIP and then I will set the criteria, the next stop basically. So once this root map is created, 
the third step is to apply the root map on an ingress interface so i'll in, i'll get inside the interface and i will call the root map inside my interface so this is how you can configure your policy based routing and once this is done we can verify with the help of these four commands so you can either give show ip policy show root map so it will show you the root map that you have created with trace route you can actually track the route which path it is following and we can also debug with ip policy all right so let's see a lab a quick lab for policy based routing so we will see the same lab that we have just discussed so this is the lab setup let's power on this access PCs also. So in this lab, I've already given the IP addresses. So let's check and confirm, show IP interface brief. So the interface has already given the IP address. So on this interface, router one F00 interface, I've given 1.1 and this interface, I have 12.1 and this interface, I have 14.1. Let's verify router two as well. So router two, this interface, I've given 12.2 here and 20.23.2 on this interface. So router 3, I have 23.3 .3 on this interface and 34.3 on this interface. So just basic configuration. And I've also created a loopback in router 3. So I'll tell you why. And router 4. So router 4, I have this interface as 4.4 .4 and... This interface as 14.4 and this interface as 34.4. All right. So now I have used created this loopback because I have configured a DHCP server. Okay. So I've configured a DHCP server. I've created two pool here for LAN1. So this is my LAN1 and I have created a DHCP pool of 1.0 network. And the default router, default gateway, I've given as router one's interface 1.1. And then I've created LAN 4 for this LAN network with a pool of 4.0 network. And the default router, I've given 4.4. Now, I, I want the PCs to receive 1.100. And this PC has 4.100, so I've excluded. So I've used the excluded address command. And I've excluded the range from 1.1 to 1.99 so that my PC can get 1.100. Okay, and for the helper address, I have give, uh, used this loopback, so that is why we have created a loopback in router three. Now, let's configure OSPF for the reachability first. So router one, I'll say router OSPF, We'll give the process ID as one. Then let's advertise the networks, directly connected networks of router one. So I will advertise your 192, 168, 1.0 network. Let's give the wildcard 255 with area zero. So likewise, I will configure all the Advertise, let's advertise all the other directly connected networks of router one. So router one, 
as one more network, which is 1.2.12.0. Wildcard will be the same. Then 1.4.14.0. That's it. So let's copy and configure router 2. So router 2, same process. So router 2 has two networks. So let me delete this. So 1.12 and then I have 2.3.23.0. That's it. So router three. Router three as two dot twenty three already, and then it has three dot four dot thirty four dot zero. So let's configure router four. So router four has 3.4 and it has this network and it has a more network for dot zero okay so i hope ospf configuration is clear so let's copy and paste Router 1, Router 2, Router 3, And out of four. So let's wait. OSPF will take some time to form the adjacency. So let's wait. So here we go. So let's check the routing table of router 1, OIP, root, OSPF. So, see, router 1 has learned about, okay, so it has not learned yet, so let it load completely. So now we have, So, router 1 has learned about this network, 3.4 network and 4 network through OSPF and for this network, the best path, it is preferring 1.4, 14.4, here also it is 14.4 and for reaching 4.0 network, it is 14.4. So, basically, this is my preferred path. So router 1 is opting via 14.4. All right. So now let me configure the IP address. So DHCP is configured. So So let's check what is the issue. So IP routes.
So let's ping my DHCP. Oh, so we have not advertised three network from router three. So let's do that. So the CIDR is 32. So I will advertise 3.3.3.3. I'll copy. Router OSPF1. Let's advertise 3. Now router one has learned about three network, so three is reachable. Yes, so now. So now the DORA process will be successful. So yes, PC1. PC1 got the IP 1.100. Let's check PC2. So the Dora is success. PC2, we got 4.100. So that is what the IP we wanted, 1.100 and 4.100, right? So now let's ping. So without creating any policy, the router will do a destination-based routing, okay? So destination-based routing means when I ping from PC1, I will ping 192, 168, 4.100. So, 4.100, router 1 will route it from router 4. Right? So, 4.0 network, it is preferring this path via router 4. So, this is your destination base. This is my routing information based. So, this is your normal default behavior of a router. Now, instead of 14.4, .4, I want the router to use the next stop as 12.2. All right, so for that, we need to create a policy. So let's do that. So before that, let me trace first. So I'll do a trace from PC1. 4.100. Okay, so see, 4.100. It is taking three hops. So first stop from towards my gateway, 1.1. .1. Next stop towards router 4, 14.4. .4. And next stop towards 4.100. So this is the normal destination-based routing. So now let's create a policy. So policy, first we will we need to create an access list. So first we will define an access list. So let's do. So in access list, I need to define the source as well as the destination. So I need to create an extended access list. So I'll say access list number 100, extended. So then I will say permit because I want to select. I'll use internet protocol. Then I will say host. Host is 192.168.1.100. And my destination is 192.168.4.100. So I have decided my host, my source, and my destination. Now let's create a route map. So I'll say route map. Let's give it any name. So I'll say it's Cisco. Then decide the action. So I want to permit here. I want to allow this the destination to this destination. Then you define a sequence number. So you can use any sequence number. I'm going with 10. After that, there are two parameters, two attributes in route map. So first is match. So I'll say match. What we need to match? We need to match IP address. Match IP with the 
ACL that we have created. So we have created an ACL number 100. So I will call this inside my root map. So I'll say 100. Then I will set another parameter. So I'll say your set IP and I'll say next stop. So when this source and source and destination comes, use the next stop as 1.2.12.2. Okay. So the root map is created. Now implicit deny is also applicable for root map. So I will say permit 20. Exit. Now the root map is also created. Now I will apply this root map. I will call this root map on this interface of the device. So I'll go to interface F00 and I will call this IP policy. Done. Root map and the root map name that we have created. So I'm calling this policy inside my interface. Enter. Done. Policy based routing has been set. So how to check? I'll say show policy. Show IP policy. So we have created a policy in interface F00 with a root map Cisco. So what is under root map Cisco? I'll say show root map. So in root map Cisco, I have called an access list 100 and I've set the clause to the next stop as 1.2.12.2. All right, now let's verify. So I'll use a debug command. So I'll say debug IP policy. And let's ping. So first I was taking this path. Now let's ping. 4.100. So I'm able to ping. Now let's check the debug here. So it says policy match and FIB policy routed. So now it is checking for the policy and forwarding, making the forwarding decision on the basis of forwarding information base. Okay, the policy is match. Now let's say, I will go to the PC and let me do a trace route again. So now, it is instead of going from 14.4, .4, so now it is preferring 1.12.2 as the next stop. Right? So now let's say if I ping from PC1 and my destination, now my, this is not my destination, now I'm pinging, let's say the loop back of router 3. So now what it says? It says the policy is rejected. It is a normal forwarding. So this is a normal forwarding means that it is forwarding on the basis of routing information base. So FIB policy is rejected. It is not following the FIB. Okay. So if I ping 4.100, sorry. So then there is a policy match. We get a policy match. And if I ping 3.3, .3, then the policy doesn't match. Normal forwarding. So this is how we can alter, maybe we can manipulate the path with the help of policy. All right. Thank you so much.